John North sustained um, a bang against Fiji, um, but was deemed fit to play against New Zealand, which he duly did. When he returned here last week, um, his shoulder was um, inspected. The scan identified that uh, there was some serious damage to the shoulder area, some muscles around that area, um, which had a high risk that if he take, took another bang on it, uh, there could be a dislocation of the shoulder. Um, our policy here is always to scan as soon as an injury occurs so that we know the full extent of any problem or injury. Um, uh, because of something like this, really. Um, so he's had the operation yesterday. He'll be out of action for three months. Okay, we'll blow his hand to him first of all, and yourself. It's a big blow to George. You know, he had great momentum coming into the season. Um, he's been a big part of what we've been doing down here, and, and also he's had a big contribution with Wales. Um, it's a shame, you know, it really is a shame. But having said that, he's a young boy, he's 18 year old, that's why it's so crucial that we get this operation done and things are done properly. We look after him because he's still very young um, and we want to make sure that um, he develops in the proper manner and that uh, we look after properly, which we do with all our players. Obviously, it's a two way thing in Wales and the regions and everything else, but do you feel a little bit let down with what's happened over this? Thing? I'm disappointed for George. Um, whether or not anything could have been done after the initial uh, bump, uh, who knows? You know, maybe he could have been operated on a little bit earlier. I don't know. We don't actually know. Um, and uh, I think moving forward, we have to be able to manage these situations. What we do here is whenever anybody has a bang, uh, and uh, we, we, we scan them immediately, it's actually, it has increased our budgetary spend a little bit, but overall it's reduced our costs because we're able to manage um, injuries better. Yeah. Sean Lamont available? Hopefully, yeah. We've got a couple of uh, niggles, but we, we're pretty certain that Sean will be available. We're actually not going to be in a position ourselves to finalise our team until uh, Thursday. Were there any other backs injured last weekend? Start the music, no, oh, yeah, nothing, nothing of significance really. We hope in Lee Williams and uh, Sean Lamont will be available. What's been wrong with Lee? He's had a bang on his shoulder. Nigel, obviously there's a registration issue, isn't there, in terms of trying to bring someone in? I've done that. We had to. Uh, um, you know, I got a lot of time for ERC as an organisation. Um, I think they brought a lot to uh, the game of rugby and they're very professional and um, we abide fully by the rules and regulations and one of the things that we had to do was we had to identify who our transfer player was by 12 o'clock today. Yeah. Now at the start of the campaign you have to name your squad and within your squad you have to name 10 front row forwards which we did. Um, three of those f front row forwards um, all of them tight deads are now injured with fractured limbs. Two fractured arms, one fractured leg. We had accounted for that scenario with uh, our development and uh, we have Simon Gardner in our development pathway who now becomes our transfer player into the squad. Oh, we're comfortable with that, you know, he's worked with us, he's trained with us. We also have um, Phil John who can play on the tight end as well. So where we currently are, we, we're comfortable with. However, our concern is that moving forward, with only a third of the Heineken Cup campaign played, that if we have another injury in that area, we will not be allowed to bring a further tight head into the squad, or anybody for that matter. Which will mean, quite probably, that we will end up playing with 14 men at some stage, which is not good for us, it's not good for the tournament, and uh, I think that probably needs to be looked at. What would you need for playing 14 men? We've got, we've currently got two players who can play tight dead. Yeah. We've got four games left in um, the Heineken Cup campaign, and we've also got our Magnus League campaign. Okay. If we pick up an injury mm -hmm. to another tight dead, if it's one, then we'll only have one tight dead to, to play to start a game. Yeah. And it, you know, so there's a chance that we could go down to 14. If we pick up two injuries, 
then we will have to start with 14 players. So those, are the, those, those are the rules. rules. So that may have contested scrums then? Yes. Yeah. Surely though there's perhaps common sense could prevail and is there a precedent here that you could ask for? I think under the circumstances, you know, three of our tight head props are clearly injured with fractures. Uh, I think I, I can understand why this legislation has been brought in because I think some teams have taken advantage of it in the past. I think in this case, clearly, uh, there is a particular problem. Um, as I say, for the short term right now, we are comfortable and we are in control of the situation. But should we pick up another injury in the tight head position, it will you know, see, severely put us under pressure. Talk to ERC? Yeah, we're speaking to ERC, you know, and we're having a debate. I, th I think their problem is that the, 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 the laws have been set for this season and it'd be very difficult for them to go outside of that. So I, we respect their, their yeah. position in this. But also, I think they respect our position. And um, no, as I said, I don't think anybody wants a situation where mm -hmm. <coughs> we've got 14 players on the field playing European rugby. I think it makes it more clear. Oh, if you're 14, then, I mean, you'd have to put somebody in there. You, never played there before. Is that what you mean? cannot, in, unless you've specifically got a tight head player, right. you cannot replace that player with another player. We right. couldn't put a back row player to make it up to 15. For, I mean, for you, you could. No, we couldn't. You couldn't. But no. you have two blue sets on it? Well, we, no. Because we still have uncontested scrums. As soon as you go to uncontested scrums, because you haven't got a tight head to go there, you have to the, go to no, 40 players. Obviously, like Phil John can play either side of the scrum, but anyone else can do that. Not really, it's a safety issue as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very specialist yeah, position, safety, yeah. I think. That's the trouble with tight dead, it's such a specialist position. The greatest backdrop to go to big European game, isn't it? Well, no, I, I'm really comfortable with the group we've got. You know, we've got, as I say, we've got a, a guy who's in our development pathway who can come in and he'll do a great job. It's a great opportunity for him, and we've backed our youngsters yeah. over the last t two years, and they've come through for us, I'm sure. Simon will as well. And we've also got Phil John who can go there. So we've got no issues at all about where we currently are. It's just what happens next if we pick up another injury in that area, which then will be a concern. When is Reece not going to be back? He's, um, he's, he's making good progress, um, and he may be available for the Leicester game, maybe, but uh, we're not quite sure on that yet. And then the other two boys you're looking at, what's February, March? Uh, yes, it's probably more like March, okay. end of March. Right. Other, other days of... Having an Italian team and having a team, 10 points in Europe, are they gone? Oh, well, they're truly gone. I think everybody should realise that by now, with the, the results, certainly of Treviso. Yeah. Um, you know, they pushed uh, Leicester all the way at home, and, and Leicester yeah. won with a, a bonus point in the last play of the game, virtually. Um, so uh, they're very tough opposition. Um, well drilled unit, big physical pack of forwards. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of quality, a lot of international quality in their ranks. So um, you know, they're, they're very difficult opposition. We certainly don't take them lightly, and that's a good thing, I think. You know, we look upon this as any other Heineken Cup match um, because they're, they're all extremely difficult, and we have to be on our top form to get anything out of this game. They're saying that two wins over the next fortnight, and you're back in a strong position in the group think, with Leicester and Perth. That's obviously the aim. You know, I think this um, this middle block of European rugby really dictates whether you're in uh, with a shout of qualifying for Europe, and quite simply, you know, two wins would do that for us. But where, where, how would you look at the group? Is it, is it a situation where you've got to win them all? Do you think, or? Where, where do you think you are? Yeah. It's very really difficult because you, you, you do depend on yeah. you know, what happens in the other groups. Yeah. There's quite a, quite a few low-scoring groups as well at this yeah. moment in time. Yeah. I think 19 points would pretty much guarantee you um, a quarter-final place. Yeah. So um, we have to be targeting that. So you know, these two games are huge for us to win these two games. Obviously, to win all your home games is vital, yeah. um, and that's what we have to do. And we'll take stock after that. How the squad reacted to last weekend? So well, it's been good in, in many ways because um, the squad has been bitterly disappointed that um, they, they didn't get the result, that we didn't get the result. And uh, it, it's good to have an environment like that where this time last year we would have probably been quite happy with, um, with that uh, result. But yeah, it, it, was, it was quite tough, quite difficult because um, you know, we had to go through a lot of uh, the negatives of the performance um, and realise quite clearly that we let a golden opportunity. Uh, move away from us. But I think the good thing is that everybody in that room realised we should have won the game and we can win the game and we can beat 
the likes of Leinster. And that is a big step forward, and uh, the fact that everybody's pretty annoyed and angry about that is a good thing. Justin Thomas, man. Justin, yeah, Justin, 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 Just